So for this particular video, we're going to be looking at something called uh, stem cells. Now, uh, stem cells, as much as uh, while the name stem cells may seem quite obvious, no, they are not cells found in the stem of a plant, right? Uh, I know it can confuse a lot of students, but when we say stem cells in biology, we're not talking about plants, right? Uh, now, stem cells, by definition, are just undifferentiated cells that can, well, continuously divide and give rise to differentiated or specialized cells. So there are a few concepts that we have to talk about over here. We have to, I've highlighted it for you. Uh, we highlight the word undifferentiated cells. We highlight the word continuously divide. And we also highlight the word give rise to differentiated or specialized cells. Let's look at each of these concepts one by one. Now, a stem cell is basically a cell that does not have a function. Uh, wait, I need to rephrase that. A stem cell is a cell that basically does not have a specialized function other than to just divide by mitosis and to differentiate or specialize. Now, as you can see, the first stem cell at the top there, once it undergoes cell division, it differentiates to become a relay neuron. The stem cell at the bottom, however, still decides to continue to divide. And when it divides, it will become, some of the stem cells will then become red blood cells. So the red blood cell and the relay neuron are said to be specialized cells because they carry out specific functions. Relay neuron transmit impulses, and of course the red blood cell carries oxygen. One of the stem cells at the bottom there remains undifferentiated. Now what does it mean by undifferentiated? Well, it can basically choose to continue either dividing, or it can also choose to specialize into any cell in the body that the body requires. So how can a stem cell continue to divide? Because when you looked at the previous video on telomeres, we understood a concept where we said that when a cell continues to divide, uh, it loses telomeres, and eventually the cell loses its vital genes or important genes, and the cell ceases to function and die. But stem cells are this weird group of cells that can just basically continue dividing theoretically an infinite amount of times. So how is that possible? If the stem cell continues to divide from the first generation to the second generation, to the eighth generation, to the sixteenth generation, notice the length of telomeres. This is weird, isn't it? The telomeres remain intact. Okay, So the cell, the sixteenth generation of stem cell, can just keep on going if it wants to. There is no loss of telomeres noticed at all within the stem cells. Now, how is that possible? Why is there this so-called double standards uh, in stem cells compared to the specialized cells that we saw earlier? The answer lies within a very important enzyme called telomerase. Now, in a stem cell, it has the chromatin, and when it undergoes the S phase, okay, the DNA replication, still within the interface, by the way, Notice that once the chromatin is replicated, you notice that there is actually a loss of telomeres. Yes, the loss of telomeres actually does happen, all right? But within the stem cell, they actually have these enzymes called telomerase. And the function of telomerase within the stem cells is very simple. Telomerase rebuilds the telomeres in the replicated chromatin. That's all it does, okay? It adds more telomeres at the end, and what actually happens is no actual loss of telomeres happen within the stem cell at all, even though DNA replication took place. That is how stem cells can continue to divide without actually losing any telomeres. So in differentiated cells, they do not have the telomerase enzymes to rebuild the telomeres, so as they continue to divide, loss of telomeres progressively happen. But in stem cells, they have the telomerase enzyme. And because they have the telomerase enzyme, well, there's no loss of telomeres that happens, even though the cells continue to divide many times. So that's the interesting thing that we want to actually look at stem cells. Now, why are stem cells important then? Very simple. Stem cells are important in your body because they are required to rebuild old cells and they produce new specialized cells when necessary. Now, what do I mean by that? 
let's look at the inside of our bone. All right. Now, the inside of our bone over here is referred to something called the bone marrow. Now, inside the bone marrow, by the way, the bone marrow itself is quite reddish. And the reason for that is because it is full of the cells known as blood stem cells. Okay. Now, what exactly are blood stem cells? Blood stem cells are these very interesting cells that, number one, can continue to divide into more blood stem cells. And some of the blood stem cells can actually differentiate into blood cells, for example, red blood cells. So when your body needs red blood cells, because we need red blood cells constantly because we lose them every day, okay, the stem cells will divide and differentiate to become red blood cells that you need. Okay? And this is an example of replacement of cells in our body. Okay? And another example is when your body is exposed to certain pathogens or you have an infection in your body, some of the blood stem cells can divide and differentiate to become a white blood cell, which is a phagocyte. And the function of the phagocyte is to remove the infection in your body. And we still have a stem cell. And that stem cell can continue dividing and it can produce new cells in our body as and when we require it. So stem cells are just these interesting cells in your body that, number one, they divide, but in a controlled manner, by the way. The, their cell division is carefully controlled, and they produce specialized or differentiated cells when it is necessary. That is their major function in our body.